Welcome back to the Toppy Blues, your source for all things Everton. My name's Connor Williams and we're back with another video today. And it is regarding Sean Dyche and Nathan Patterson, the slap. And just debunking, talking about what happened, because um, it caused quite the outrage at the weekend. I think the report and the reporter might have disingenuous um, beliefs, like, like motives. Um, I, I think they're putting out something they know will gain traction and our fans do gain engagement and traction massively because one small thing, and we do defend the club very, very highly, which isn't a knock, but one small thing and there is a kickoff, rightly or wrongly, nine times out of ten rightly because I think we're defending the club, but there is a kickoff which causes engagement, which causes money. Um, and Matt Hughes has... This isn't the first negative article he's put out about us. But I do think our fans have fell for it a little bit. So we'll just have to debunk this because I'm seeing people say get rid of him now, get his, rip his contract up in the summer regardless. And it's like, so we're just going to get into it. Um, I feel like some people are looking for the straw that breaks the camel's back and we need to really adjust and assess this before realising if this is it. So the report came out on Friday uh, from Matt Hughes and Lewis Steele of the Mail. The article stated below that James Tarkowski had to pull manager Sean Deitch aside during a squad meal during the Portugal training camp after Deitch jokingly jokingly slapped Nathan Patterson on the head harder than he meant to. Patterson was said to have been embarrassed and some of the players in the squad unimpressed. Deitch apologised to Patterson afterwards. Deitch's intentions were harmless. It was otherwise good-natured evening. Everton sources in it claimed there was no major bust-ups, claiming that the incident was a clumsy joke that backfired and sources insist the trip was a success with the players arriving back in the UK last Friday. So, basically, it was, like, ignore the papers. If you were in the room, it's just a... And it, I'm not going to say even an ill, bad, like, it's just a joke that got caught a little bit too far. So I don't really see a major issue with it in that aspect. You know, it's something that people were kicking off and I don't get it because it's something you do to your mates on the daily. You'd punch your mate in the arm jokingly. You'd pretend to push them jokingly. That's all he's done. He's just jokingly gone, oh, shut up, lad. And he's hit him a bit harder than he's meant to. That's it. That's it. So the people kicking off going, get rid of him now. All right, then. I just hope you never jokingly and inter physically interact with your friends because otherwise you're a bad friend. You're basically assaulted, which is what people I think we're getting carried away with. Um, some Something out of nothing as well, by the way. Um, it probably did happen. I think it's been exaggerated. Matt Hughes is known for writing negative articles about us. Um, it, I don't know. People are saying about alcohol. The report doesn't mention alcohol. People are assuming that Deitch and the players were having a pint. There's no actual proof of that. People, our fans, some of our fans are assuming that there was drink involved. There might have been. There might have been. I can't say there isn't because I wasn't there. But, but also you can't say there is because you weren't there. So, you know, it's a catch-22. I can't say there isn't. There might have been. But you can't sit there and tell me that there was because you weren't there either. I think it's just a joke. The more worrying thing is how the story got out. If it's people in the restaurant, that's package and parcel of being of of notoriety in the public, you know, celebrities, footballers, etc. They can't go to the toilet without it being on the press nowadays. That's just unfortunately the life of notoriety. Um, you do sort of throw away anything where you know Wayne Rooney in a lollipop with his kids in those shorts. Everyone's seen the photo that the press snapped of him. You can't even do that. You can't even eat an oversized novelty lollipop without it, you know, coming up in the press. That's that's just the way it is. If it's somebody leaking it, that I think that's a bigger problem for the club. And I'm more annoyed that it was leaked by somebody because I don't think that benefits any of us. Um, I don't get how the story's got out. I, I, like, I don't get it unless there's people in the restaurant. If it has been leaked, I'm a little bit disappointed because... Whoever it is, staff, players, whoever, you know, kit man, whoever, whoever, literally whoever, social media, like, God, the bus driver, whoever it is, it's not help. It's not helping a cause. Um, it's it's causing a disarray. But I'm not saying it, it was leaked. We, we we don't know how it's got out. 
It could have been people in the restaurant, like I said. I very I find it quite hard to believe that Everton would have booked out a whole restaurant privately just for themselves. Normally they'd probably ask for a function room or you know, somewhere in the back, maybe. But I don't think Everton would have gone there and gone, your whole restaurant booked up this evening. So there is a good chance that it was just a member of the public who's gone, is that Everton? Yeah, you know, it is. And then seen Sean Deitch and gone, has he done that? You know, uh, and then seen it because you'd notice if you know Tarkowski's a big lad. If he got up to then go to the manager and then Deitch went over, you could you could probably tell. But again, if it is somebody from the restaurant, you will have only seen all of this at, at like across the restaurant. You wouldn't have been anywhere near them. Um, like like I said, they wouldn't have booked it out, but you wouldn't have been near them. They wouldn't have been sat there, you know, rubbing arms with people because they are of the notoriety. Joe Thomas from the Echo has confirmed that the story is true. He said it was nothing more than a misunderstanding and that it was dealt with quickly and everybody's moved on. Players and everyone were in training fine the next day. So my final thoughts are this. It was a joke. I've I've jokingly pushed my friends. I've jokingly, you know, give them um, like a dig to the arm, birthday digs, that type of thing in the past. I've I've done it. I've physically joked with my friends and been like, hey, that's what it is. Um, That's what it is. And I, I get... People will go, oh, well, yeah, well, he's a manager, though. Like, you know, it's not, it's not, it's a bit different from your mates. But Deitch's man management is that he likes to view the players on a level. And people who've worked with him tend to speak quite highly of his man management. So I think he has tried to go in with the, uh, you know, mates mentality. And, and uh, you know, he's, he's Deitch, you know, he seems like a type of bloke that would pull out a little joke like that. I think it's a joke. It's nothing more than a joke. I'm not going to go into the depths of why or why hasn't he done it because I think it just, just the book lies it. It's a joke. Um, you could argue, is it a bit, a bit, um, a bit unprofessional, I guess, which is what people are saying. It depends. It depends how close you are with your manager, your boss, doesn't it really? These are footballers as well. It's not the same as working in a company and the CEO coming and smacking you upside your head, you you know, you hardly ever speak to them. They're probably the big fish and you're, you know, the cog in the machine and there's about four levels to you. But in this relationship, they see each other every day, pretty much. So there is a relationship there between him and the players. So to judge, you know, is the joke unacceptable? Is it, you know, it's a bit odd because you're not in that relationship. You're looking at outside inwards, in my opinion. Um, because for all we know, in training behind closed doors, Patterson might get him back. Not saying he will, but he might get him back as a joke. You don't know the relationship. Um, it's unfortunate that it's the male again and Matt Hughes. I wouldn't. I, I'm really not gutted or annoyed, but I, I am a bit bothered that people are like, like like have took Matt Hughes for granted. His words for you know like verbatim here. Um, because it was only a month ago our fans were ripping Matt Hughes going, oh, would you turn it in? But now he writes this and people are going, oh, no, yeah, this must have happened. No, no, it, it could have just been, it has happened, but it, it is just a joke um, that's used to or rile us up. I don't even think it's caused to derail our season or any big conspiracy. It is just caused to rile up a fan base that they know can be riled up. So you go on their page and you click on the story and that is literally what this is. It is just engagement farming and it's worked it has worked i've seen this story retweeted i've seen it replied to i've seen it liked i've seen it shared it worked it got the engagement that they desired i do be albeit think it's slightly underhanded but but that's because i'm an everton fan you know that is a bit of a you know if it was a liverpool article i'd have probably read it and laughed um so other fans will see it as like oh you know laughing at it so i can get why they've done it but in terms of an Everton point of view, I, I don't think it needs to go any further than that. I think it's just a joke that's been caught and taken way out of proportion. Um, and there's there's a big, big fight left to go. And I don't think, um, I, I wouldn't get hung up on this because there are bigger fights coming. Still got a point deduction, still got 7-7 seven, seven, seven coming out, still got a relegation battle. There are bigger points to get hung up on than than this. Um, and we do sort of need to stay together. Um but yeah, yeah, I also do feel like some, and it's a very small sum, I don't like digging out people, especially in, in our own fan bases, but I feel like some aren't ever, haven't ever been warm to the manager, which is fine. Everyone's entitled to that opinion. This is a straw I think that some people were looking for and are now running with, get rid. I would argue, judging 
purely based on where we finished this season type of thing. And I mean, not just that, because people, you know, we haven't won a lot of games and I think the pressure is on him now, but sort of judge it all accumulatively at the end of the season and take into account the um, restrictions he's had and the battles he's had, but also taking, he's not, I assume people go, but he's not post Chris, and he's not, he's not, but also take into account the things he has had at his disposal, and, you know, could he have done better here, could they have done better there, but also weighing points deductions out of his hands, squad being on its bare bones is a bit out of his hands, et cetera, et cetera, but I don't think Nathan Patterson and Slapgate is, is where you should draw the line and go, no, done, that's it, you know what I mean, that, that shouldn't be your final nail in the coffin, uh, that is all we have time for. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and comment down below your thoughts. Look forward to reading them. See you soon.